Now, till this point, we have done so many things in this project. Basically, we created two different microservices and we have also gone through some concepts. Example, if one microservice wants to call the second microservice, how will they discover? So for that, we have installed, also we have worked with the Eureka server, Eureka client. Uh, if you want to make sure that one instance is able to call the other one or the one service is want to call the other one, what is shortcut way? So we have used Fing as well. Now there's one important concept, of course, microservice is a huge concept, there are a lot of things, but then one thing which is very important is the API gateway. Now, why do we need API gateway? See, the thing is, if you talk about a user, now user is looking at your microservices, in fact, all your microservices combined as one application, right? Now user has no interest to know, okay, you have quiz microservice, you have question microservice. For user, that's one application, right? So the way to interact with the application should be only one URL. The problem which we are having now is we have two services, right? We have a question service and we have a quiz service. Now both these services have a different name, different port number. And when you want to access them, so basically we need to, we have to mention the port number as well, right? For example, if you want to work with the quiz service, you have to work with 8090. If you want to work with the question service, you have to say 8080 or 8081. Uh, if you want to individually access them without quiz service, right? Now the thing is, apart from this, there are a few more problems. Let's say you want to also achieve authentication. Now you have multiple microservices and one, if a user comes to access one microservice, you will say, okay, enter your username password and you're like, okay, we got the username password. The user can access the resource, but for that microservice, what if a user says, I want to go, I want to access the next microservice. Now at this point, Again, the next microservice will say, okay, tell me who you are. Prove that you are that person. Again, a user will enter username and password. Do you want to give this experience to the user where user is logging for every microservice to access? Of course not. A user should access only once. What if you want to maintain the log file? What if you want to achieve some cross-cutting concerns in at one place? And that's where we can use API Gateway. So this API Gateway becomes the entry point or the interface for the user. How do you do that? Now in Spring Cloud, basically you do get the API gateway and we just have to use it. And as we have done till now, for every new thing, we have to create a new project. I know that's the only part of microservices which is tricky, is because every new thing is a new project. Of course, as a developer, developer's perspective, when it comes to the ops, maintaining it, huh, I get in trouble. But the thing is, we are learning microservices, right? It has a lot of features and we can adjust one or two. So the first thing you will do is, uh, you will go to this website, which is start.spring.io, and here what you will do is you will create a new project, Maven. Uh, the, so from, we are making the video, now we got a new version between the video. So earlier we were working with 3.1.1, now we got 3.1.2. It should be good, let's try this. We got com.telisco as my group ID, and the artifact ID is API Gateway, okay, and jar, version 17 because in my machine I have Java 17 here. Now the dependencies, we only need two dependencies here. The first one is gateway because of course we need an API gateway and also we need a Eureka client because it has to register itself to the service disk or to the Eureka server. And once you got these two dependencies, of course you can add actuator, you can add dev tools which you can use in the other projects as well. But just to keep it simple, I'm going for two, gateway and Eureka's discovery client. With this, let's download the project. So you can see uh, we got API Gateway. In this machine, I already had one zip file and that's why you can see in bracket it is one. So let me unzip it. So unzipping done, uh, let me open this in my IntelliJ IDEA. So open. So navigate it to the folder. And now after unzipping it, I'm opening the project and this is where you got your API Gateway. And that's it. This is your API Gateway, is it? <laughs> okay, so we have to make few changes. The first thing is, if you look at the SRC, we got two files here in Java. We got one file in Java, which is API Gateway Application. And then if you look at the resources, it is Application Properties, which is empty. And that's it, this, this is your project, API Gateway. Now, why it is API Gateway? With, because of the name? No, because of the library which you have added, or the JAR file which you have added, which is the starter GPA, right? Uh, this is your API. The thing is, if you want this to work, you have to make some changes. Because by default, if you try to run this project, it will run on 8080. And we already have that port busy, right? So just to give you a number of port we are using, so we have two question service instances running on 8080, 8081. We got a quiz service running on 8090. We got our Eureka server running on 8761. And API Gateway, we need to run on some other server. So 
we'll set two things here. First is cloud.application.name. So let's set this as API gateway. The next thing you have to mention is the server number. Let's say 8765 port number. And uh, we need one more thing. In fact, we'll need two more things. We'll do that later. So at this point, we have done the configuration. And now let's run this and let's see if this works. I will right click this and say run. So there's running. Okay, cool. And the port number is 8765. I will go back to my Eureka server to check. So I went to Eureka and the number of application running is you got two question service running. We got one quiz service and we got API gateway as well, which is running on port number 8765. So we got API gateway. So now this is your front. Now what this also means is if you go back to your postman, remember we were sending requests to the quiz and the port number is this, but then we don't want directly to access the quiz service. I want to use it through the API gateway. So this API gateway port number is 8765. So every time you send a request for the question service or for the quiz service, this is a way you have to go. From here you will go. So once we get into API gateway, now API gateway has no idea what this quiz is. Example, if I run this code or run this particular URL, it's not working because the API gateway has no idea what this quiz is. Now this quiz is a URL, which who knows about this URL, the quiz service. If you use question there, who knows about quiz question? It is question service. API gateway has no idea, but what API gateway knows is the name of the service. How? We have used the Eureka client. So what it does is it checks. Okay. So we have API gateway knows about two things, the question service and the quiz service. So that means if you want to use a quiz service from the API gateway here before the quiz, you need to mention in caps because that's what we have mentioned quiz service. So now we are sending request from the quiz service. So API gateway will connect to the quiz service because of the Eureka client. And then it is able to communicate. See, ultimately we are trying to connect with the quiz instance or the quiz service. If you run this code or if you run this URL, still not working. Okay. We have to do one more thing in the code of application.properties basically here of API gateway. We need to set one more thing, which is the locator. So we have to mention a spring.cloud.gateway.discovery.locator. By default is false and you have to enable this. So what you're doing is you are, you are asking the API gateway, Hey, I'm allowing you to search. Okay. Locate the services in the earlier, before this, we were not allowing it. So now we are allowing it to API gateway, you know, enjoy your, enjoy the search, you know, look, look for the services with the help of Eureka client. Okay. So it looks cool. Let's go back to our postman. I hope this time it will work. Send it worked. So we are basically trying to access the quiz service, but we are not talking directly to quiz service. A client send, send the request to the API gateway and API gateway says, okay, uh, I need to search about the quiz service. It will discover the quiz service from the Eureka server and then sends the request. That's what is working. But then I have one little issue here, which is this particular thing. I don't want to mention quiz service here. Uh, I mean, in capitals, of course, you can also remove the entire part here. We have to do a lot of configuration for that. And we just want to make it simple at this point. Uh, this is for beginners. So we'll not be removing this. There are some steps as well to remove this, but at least what I can do is I can make it lowercase instead of uppercase. So I can say service, the quiz service. And now when you send request, it's not working because the capital works small is not working. At least this looks cool, right? Compared to the capital one. So how do you make it work? Uh, you can use one more property here, which is the lowercase. So this is spring.cloud.gateway.discovery.locator.lowercase service ID, because we don't want to go for capital. It will search for the lower one. I mean, it will convert that into lower. And now make, after making the changes, let's restart. Okay. Restarting complete. And now let's try send. It worked, right? So this is basically how we use API gateway, a lot of configuration that can be an advanced part of this particular series. But yeah, this is about the series on microservices. I know we have done so many things. The number of projects which you created is huge. In fact, I'm teaching you all those things and I'm working on different projects. While I'm talking to you, see, as a trainer, we have to be very attentive because when you're working somewhere and if you take a gap in between that works in videos, it will not. So sometimes even I get confused which service I have to go. I'm, I'm talking, I'm telling you that we are going to have to go to 
questions of is but in my brain it takes some time to register which project i have to open right maybe there should be a eureka server in my brain as well that will be weird anyway so we were working with this three four projects the quiz service the question service the service registry api gateway just to go give you a brief when a user wants to play the quiz first we need to create the quiz right but when you say create quiz where are the questions now question belongs to the question service right in the question service we can add questions we can remove questions we can search for a particular question we can uh, generate questions for quiz we can get questions for a particular id or list of ids uh, we can also calculate the score and everything we have done in the question service in the quiz service basically we were asking the user what you want to do you want to create a quiz okay i will do it for you but actually quiz service is doing nothing you know it just says hey question generate a quiz for me smart right so the thing is we have two microservices and then we were also able to do load balancing because of uh, eureka client and fang but then we don't want to directly in interact with the each individual services and that's why we have used api gateway so as a user i will interact with the api gateway api gateway will interact with the other services and uh, how do you search between different services and that's why we have eureka client and eureka server and we have seen that as well i know uh, when you are doing this project there will be a lot of issues so let us know in the comment section and also you can join the discord channel you will find the link in description uh, and you can ask your question there you know people will be happy to help you there and we will also be there to help you so that's it from this video and that's it from this series basically and i will also try to work on the advanced part of it and till then enjoy the other tutorials coming up